Hello everybody, this is Grant, Developer Evangelist on the OpenShift team at Red Hat. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a do-it-yourself application type on the OpenShift servers and install and configure Tomcat. First thing we'll want to do is create an OpenShift account if you haven't already done so. In order to do that, just open up a web browser and go to openshift.redhat.com, click on try it now, fill in the email address and password. You can also enter in a promo code of Tomcat if you want to use a promo code. Once you have an account, let's go ahead and create a Tomcat application. So let's do that by issuing the RHC app create command. We'll call our application Tomcat and the application type is actually do it yourself or DIY-0.1. I'm also going to pass in my login name for authentication, enter in my password. At this point, it's making a call up to the OpenShift servers via our REST API to provision some space on a machine for my application. It's also going to ensure that any SE Linux policies, Linux control groups, PAM namespaces, and etc. are set up and configured for my application. It will also propagate the DNS entry out worldwide for me. Now that my application has been created, let's verify that it's available via the web browser. I'm going to go to Tomcat on PaaS, which is my namespace, rhcloud.com. As you can see, we have a templated do-it-yourself cartridge here, and it's actually using a Ruby server by default. So we actually need to uh, stop this Ruby server and remove it from the action hook scripts. So to do that, I'm going to cd into the Tomcat directory, then I'm going to go into the .openshift action hooks directory. If I take a quick look at the start script, we can see that it is starting a test Ruby server.rb. So the first thing we want to do before we remove these two files is to stop the currently running server. I do that by saying rhc app stop and pass in my application name. Let's verify that the application is no longer available by going to tomcat-onpaz.rhcloud.com. Let me refresh this. And we can see that there's no currently running server on the application node. So let's go ahead and remove the start script and the stop script and replace them with blank files. I'll then want to commit these changes to my local Git repository. And then I want to push these changes up to my OpenShift server. Now we're ready to download and install Tomcat. If you'll notice, this is my actual username and my host name for the server. So I can copy this and SSH into that box. As you can see, I wasn't prompted for any authentication. That's because we use the SSH keys that we generate when we create your account. Now that I'm sitting on my OpenShift server, I can look at the directory structure. I want to go into the Tomcat directory, which is the name of my application, and then go into the data, data directory. At this point, I want to download the Tomcat source code. So I'm going to quickly Google for Tomcat and go to the Apache Tomcat project. I'm going to download the latest version, version 7.0.27, and I want the targz file. So I'm actually going to copy that link then go back to my OpenShift server and wget that, which will essentially just download it locally. You can see how fast that was. We were actually getting 14 megs a second there. It just shows you how fast our actual servers are on the Red Hat cloud. I now have the targz file. I can extract that with tar zxvf and the file name. Now I want to remove the targz file and I should just have an Apache Tomcat directory. So I'm going to cd into that directory and then go into the conf directory. Then I'm actually going to edit the uh, server.xml file. Let me turn syntax highlighting on real quick. By default, OpenShift will not let you bind to any ports below 15,000 other than 8080. So we need to re configure these ports to use something above the 15,000 range. So I'm going to change this from 8,005 to 15,005. Go down the file just a little bit. I'm 
Here's the uh, connector port. This defines what port Tomcat's going to listen on. This is actually configured for 8080, and that's what we want. 8080 is the local port that the proxy redirects all traffic to on port 80. But we need to tell it which address or host to listen on. So let me save this file. And I'm going to come back to the command line, and I'm going to type in EMV, and I'm going to grep for internal. This will list my internal IP for me, 127.6.102.129. I'm going to copy that, and then VI the server XML file again. Go back to where we are, and I'm going to add a line to this, and it's going to be called address, and I'm going to paste in my local IP address. Keep going down. This one is actually commented out, so we don't need to change that. Now we need to change the AGP port or AJP port. So I'm going to change this to 15,000. And nine, let's see. Engine name Catalina, default host is localhost. Let's change that to our IP address as well. And let's keep going down. Host name local host at base web apps. Let's change this to our actual host name. In my case, it's tomcat on paz.rhcloud.com. And I think that's all we need to change. So let's save that. And now we can go up a directory and then go into the bin directory and start up tomcat. I'm going to do that by running startup.sh. I'm going to background that. And then I'm going to tell the log files so I can see what's going on with my server. Looks like it's starting up fine. I don't see any error messages here. And we can see my server started up in about 6,000 milliseconds. So now let's hit our Tomcat server running, tomcatonpaz.rhcloud.com. Let me refresh it. And we can see that we now have Tomcat 7 running on OpenShift. One last thing. We may want to use the Manager app and uh, to look at server status and other things. So if I click on Manager app, it's going to ask me to authenticate. I'm going to cancel this, and it'll explain what I need to do. I basically need to add the Manager GUI role with a username and password. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my terminal, exit out of my tail command, and go back into the conf directory. Here I should have a Tomcat users.xml file. So we'll scroll down to the bottom of this file and let's add the role of manager GUI, username Tomcat, and let's change the password to Tomcat as well. Let me go back to my bin directory, shut down Tomcat, and let's start it back up using the same command we did before. All right, the server's back up and running. So let's go back to our main page here and refresh this again. And now let me go to the manager app. I should be able to authenticate with Tomcat and Tomcat. And now I can run some commands on my machine and manage it however I want. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, shoot us an email at openshift at redhat.com, come to our forums at openshift.com, or you can hang out in RRC with us in the Pound OpenShift channel on Freenode.